everyone, Dr. Lee here from Your Vet Online, and tonight we are going to be talking all about this pet alert that's been um, all in our media lately, and basically trying to I want to try to explain absolutely what it's all about, and so that you guys can be well informed and make some good decisions about what you need to feed your pets. Because yeah, it can be a little bit difficult to work out what's good and what's bad. So basically, for the last couple of months, the FDA, um, I think they put out an alert in, in July, and basically that was all about um, being aware that there was a pet food problem with grain-free diets. Now, they what they'd noticed is that there was a link that, that was bet, um, between diets that contained um, some grain-free products and a condition called dilated cardiomyopathy, or I'll call it DCM from sort of now on. In tonight's talk, I want to briefly cover what the problem is and how you can recognize whether there's a problem and what you actually need to do about it. And absolutely what you need to do as far as um, reporting this issue if you do notice that your pets might be having an issue with it. Guys, if you haven't met me before, my name is Dr. Lee and I'm the founder of Your Vet Online. And basically, we are a resource for pet and livestock owners who have questions about their animals. Basically, we provide access to veterinarians 24-7, so it doesn't matter whether you've got a problem with your cat or dog in the morning, in the middle of the night, on the weekend, on a public holiday, our vets are always available to help you out. What is DCM? Well, this is an acronym for dilated cardiomyopathy, and basically what it means is that our heart muscle, instead of being nice and um, firm and having good um, good squeezes and pushes and being able to pump the blood through, it becomes like a floppy vessel and it's just, it doesn't really do anything. And so there's no, um, there's not enough real muscle there to get it um, to to pump the um, the heart. Yeah, through, you know, the blood through the heart and into the, across through the lungs to pick up oxygen and also around the whole body. So basically what we get with DCM is we sometimes get um, heart fail, valves that will leak and what that then um, will result in is that we get fluids building back up into the chest and then of course, we end up having things like congestive heart failure and um, or problems with fluid build up into our abdomen, depending on which valve it might be. And it can be a bit of a disaster and can result in death. Now, if caught early and it's the nutritional type of DCM and not the sort of genetic type, then we can sometimes be able to reverse all these uh, problems. So the problem that we're talking about today is a nutritional problem. It's not related to the genetic problem that some dogs get. So it's more gen um, nutritional. And in some cases, if we catch things early enough, we can actually reverse this whole problem. So the FDA alert, this happened on about the 12th of July this, of this year. And basically, it's a warning, guys. We're not saying panic. There's been no recalls. It's just a warning. And it's and it's and we're not saying you can't feed these products, that you know, these grain feed products. But what we're saying is you've got to take note and you've got to realise that what you're feeding is appropriate and it's been um, formulated 
well because like everything and if you have known me before and you've read some of my articles check out the best dog food um, or pet food article because that goes into how to choose a diet because a lot of companies it the, the problems we're seeing with this are often from our smaller boutique companies they don't have a nutritionist on board they're not um, that the diets are often legume based I'll go into exactly what um, the properties of these diets are a little bit later but they also um, might contain exotic foods now um, or proteins now one of the things that I find really interesting is the whole grain free fad has been based on as a marketing ploy there are very few animals that actually require grain free food so you know people say they might have an allergy to something well actually allergies the most common allergies are to beef and chicken so you know go figure but anyway we've got this problem now and we really need to make sure that we are being careful and being um, aware of what the signs are that we need to look out for. What happened was the FDA started getting a whole lot of reports that there was um, a whole lot of dogs that were getting um, DCM. And when they went and looked at it, it seemed that it wasn't, the, there was a link that showed that it was um, this these diets and it wasn't related to their breed. It wasn't remotely related to their genetics it was out of the usual but the thing that they all had in common was that they were all fed grain free let's just have a look here we'll go talk about what the foods are that are implicated now we're not talking about any particular brands here guys we've basically got to consider it as a um, it's not really a brand thing it's a composition of the actual diet thing so there will be some grain free diets that are absolutely okay but then there might be some that aren't so you need to go and check your bag of food and if you're worried um, our our veterinarians are able to assist you go to yourvetonline.com and you can head over there and if you want to consult we can assist you to talk this through with your particular um, diet that your animals are on but rather other than that what we know and that what you have to be very aware of is that it the, the trend we are seeing is that it's related to legumes pulses which are the seeds of the legume and potatoes as the main ingredients in the food now remember that potatoes can be your red potatoes your kumara um, sweet potato all of that sort of thing so just um, just be aware of that it's not just a white a white potato and also the problem is is a little bit related to proteins and what the where where the food is actually getting the protein from so if we're looking at starches and the fiber derivatives of those ingredients like your pea protein your pea starch your pea fiber so just be aware it's anything that's sort of legume related as well as you know um, potato related what we've also the fda also noticed was that these diets have been fed for quite some time often and sometimes it wasn't for very long at all but the thing in common was that um, the pets that showed the issue they were only fed that diet so they didn't have a, a diet that was mixed up a little bit so I know many of you might feed you know some biscuits one night then they might get a bit of a home-cooked meal the next night if that's the case they may take longer to develop the symptoms if they if they're going to if there's a problem so yeah so if we want to just name some of these I've got a little list here so if we think of things like legumes like peas I'm just going to read this off so I don't get it wrong peas beans lentils chickpeas soybeans and peanuts and so those are the legumes that are um, often involved. And I just want to note, I had a question today about rice. 
Rice is not a legume, it's actually a grain, and rice is perfectly okay. Now, you're not going to be feeding a diet that's straight rice anyways. When we're talking about this, we're talking about the whole diet formulation. Should you be or should I be concerned? What we want to do is we want to think about what are those clinical signs that your dog might be showing that may give us a tweak that something could be up. So I actually spoke to someone the other day in one of my online consults and she was saying she she actually wanted to know more about um, some arthritis drugs for her dog. But when I actually started talking to her, she said, oh, look, he's just getting a bit slow. He doesn't want to go for a walk anymore. He just sits down quite a lot and huffs and puffs a bit. And this was a reasonably young dog. It was, I think he was eight and he was a golden retriever. And I kind of was like, oh, oh this is not good. This doesn't sound good. And, you know, when we start to hear these things, Things, we start to think, oh, what is this actually lameness that's causing the problem or is it something else? And so we go into things like the diet, you know, and all those things that could potentially have a whole body system that might cause your dog to slow down. So the things that we always kind of think about when we're talking about heart disease and that give the little trigger in my mind that your dog or your cat or um even person to be there, to be honest, might have an issue there, is any sort of signs of, say, weakness, um, slowing down on walks, like, as I said before, they're not quite as keen to go or just really slow, whereas they used to be burning around and honing. Um, so that can be a little thing. They might have started coughing. Now, coughing is one of those things yeah, some heart disease you might, it's not the, the a purest point of view, wouldn't say coughing, but hey, that could have started. They might have had, they might have trouble, you know, like sort of trouble breathing. They might, their respiratory rate, I know some of you might have listened to my heart uh, tutorial and basically in that one I always say if they're sleeping, count how many breaths they take in a minute or 15 seconds and times it by four. And I always like them to be under 30. If you do that now and you see that it's a little bit high and they're feeding a grain diet, yeah, you need to talk to your vet. So if they're fainting, if they're doing anything weird. So if you notice any of those sort of signs, you really do want to get book them in for a physical consult with your veterinarian because they're going to listen to their heart. They're going to be listening for murmurs and abnormal heart rhythm if you are concerned then definitely you do need and you're feeding this type of food you definitely need to book your pet in for a um, physical consult look we can help on the online vets to go through diets to do all you know talk it through with you but you need to have someone listen to your dog's heart and potentially if they do find issues there then you will it is wise to do some blood tests and maybe an echocardiogram and so we'll just head on to our next little part so if your dog is showing signs of dcm or it might be another heart problem basically um we want to then look at everything. So your vet is going to talk to you about their lifestyle. You're going to need to um, provide them with either a photo or a cutout of the of the bag ingredient list, so that then they can um, go through that your what you've been feeding, check to see whether it's a diet that's actually going to have potentially have any problems. We want to know what treats your dog has been on as well. Just, you know, we go through all these things. The next thing is we, like your vet will do, is they'll want to test taurine levels. The whole issue has been implicated with taurine. Um, taurine is a factor that um, helps actually produce other 
amino acids that are really critical in the formation of the heart muscle and the way the heart muscle moves and operates. So that's why you often hear people, if you've been researching this a little bit, talk about taurine. So we can um, we can definitely test um, for that. And then if your vet is, thinks this is actually the problem, if you're in Australia, you your vet will put in a what we call a pet fast review. Basically, it's a it's a veterinary run um, quality control system for pet food that's only been started and it's only been going for a little while. But basically, when vets start to notice that they're seeing some trends, you know, they put their the information into the site so that we can then learn and find out what the triggers are, what the links are, and we can make changes as required. And, and that could involve a recall. If you're in America, then you'll use the FDA. Um, I'm not too sure about New Zealand or the UK, sorry guys. So if you're watching from there, your vet will know who they need to report this to. But basically, whoever your vet is, is going to assess your, your dog's diet they're going to then look at the taurine levels and sometimes taurine on a blood can actually come back normal so which is kind of a little bit frustrating but it doesn't mean if there's other signs there then we still treat um, it's just a function of how taurine can show up in the blood and how the test is performed but what we might want to do is send your dog for a specialist echocardio um, um, ultrasound and that's so that we can actually physically see the size of the muscle. Um, is it nice and thick? Is it floppy? Are the valves working? Is there fluid um, in places where there shouldn't be fluid? Um, and that's really, really important. That's also the start of it. And then you'll be put on a supplementary diet. They will change the diet to one that is more appropriate and is going to help will have more taurine in it than what your current one is and they may also supplement now you all might say okay cool I'll just go and supplement with taurine well there's a little bit more to it than that and even with the veterinarians will be getting guidance from nutritionists and cardiologists with regard to that so and it's very dependent on your actual dog and what the state of their heart is so it's not something that you can just go okay I'm just going to nip off there and, and start supplementing myself you can choose though to feed when you start to feed a different diet and one that is not sort of a grain free specific diet it is wise to choose your foods that are higher in taurine so you'll be looking at your beef food um, that sort of and um, rather than pork and lamb. Pork and lamb are a little bit lower. Um, it's also very important, and this is one that I sort of struggle with and I met, I touched on it earlier, is actually decide why are you feeding grain-free? There are very few dogs that actually, and cats, that are actually allergic to grains or they have irritability to grains. So it is nine times out of ten it's actually an allergy to something else and you know you or there's a problem with something else and it's just a bit of a fad diet so really ask yourself that question do I want to feed something that potentially could cause a problem and I'm not saying all oh, I don't know the brands I couldn't tell you it's all very specific to certain um, ingredients as I said and then some brands are putting in extra taurine. So make sure you check the label. Is there added taurine? So it's not, I'm not giving a hard and fast ban or grain free food, but it's very important that you do discuss this with your veterinarian. And the other thing that's also kind of been implicated is that a lot of the foods that have been um, reported to the FDA have also been made with exotic proteins such as bison such well over there over in america it's kangaroo it's not really noted as an exotic food in australia because it's so common here crocodile all these exotic type proteins 
I don't want people using them unless they've been diagnosed with an allergy because we need to keep these separate and you need to keep the, have that availability um, to be able to feed them if you need them. So yeah, that's a big one too. What we wanna do is we wanna make sure that we're keeping, we go and check our labels, we check to see what the top five ingredients are, if they are all tend to be legumes or something that's um, legume, pea, potato, that sort of thing, then check to see whether there's been taurine added to it. You can contact us and we can help you work all that out if you need to. If you're noticing signs with your dog, that could mean that they have dilated cardiomyopathy then you please go and visit your veterinarian because it's so important that you do that. Okay, let's see what some questions here. Right, so Julie's asked, we put peanut butter in Kong toys. No issue? Absolutely no, not an issue at all. So we're talking about a diet. So a diet is something that you're, you're feeding your dog every single day. So it's like, they don't have other foods involved. So it's not the odd treat. Um, yeah, it's basically you're feeding every single day. It's the same food. So that's why when I go on about it all the time, about um, making sure you've got a balanced diet, it's not, it's, it's important if you're feeding the same thing every single day. All right, so peanut butter, yeah, you can keep doing that. I'm sure they love it. We we'll, might write a few more things on the blog and um, so that you can have a look and have a refer back to. Just realise that we're not saying that um, there's no recalls at this stage. It's more of a heads up. Please be careful with what you're feeding. Don't, you know... If, if it was my dog, I personally wouldn't feed grain free. I don't see any need to unless your dog has a allergy that has been completely diagnosed with a food trial and food trials go for anywhere between six to 12 weeks. So, and sometimes longer. So unless you've got a dog that's had that, Grain free is not even on my radar. I just think it's an expensive marketing fad. Just make sure you understand what's in the food so that you can make an informed choice and ensure that your dog is safe. All right, then, guys, thank you so much. If you ever need a vet and you um, are stuck, we're available 24 7, yourvetonline.com. All right, we'll catch you later. See you next week. Bye.